So Lutz Marbles, the Lutz Swirl. I met the guy, actually, the grandson of Lutz. And he comes up to me and he goes, here's a Lutz Marble, my grandfather made. I mean, that's kind of cool. A lot of people make marbles, and some are art form marbles, like Mark Matthews, the Ohio artist. Um, and people are surprised at how much money marbles are. $200, $300, lots of uh, collectible marbles. These particular marbles are going to range in value between like a dollar and about $10 each, right, as we go through. So if you want to be conservative, a dollar each. If you don't want, oh, okay, 90, so there you go. If you don't want to be conservative and you want to say, well, I want to sell them as a collection, I want top dollar, you can be in that $20 each range. Why? couple things, they're used. They haven't only been maintained in the box where they first came from, they've been used and play with. They are in good shape, but most of them, yours are in good shape, they are not pitted. A lot of them are pitted. You can see the pit holes all the way through. These are quite nice. I would suggest you get them out of this. That's why we bought it. Okay, well, it, while they look good, here's why I don't want them in here. They're all on top of each other, and also you have glass just pushing against each other. Now, they're going to scratch when you try to move them around to get them out. So, having them flat is always better. Speaking of which, we've got some more. Your marbles are clay marbles. They are not as common as Joanne's marbles, okay? These clay marbles, shooters in fact, are actually much more rare. And we see them, rarity, impacts value, a little bit more valuable. How'd you acquire yours? From your dad, so he had them all these years. Okay, so these three marbles are worth about $75 for the three marbles. These two marbles are worth about $75 for these two marbles. So you have $150 worth of marbles in this box. And they date to between 1890 and about 1910. They're older than the Lutz marbles, what do you like about the style? You like her little tiny waist? Is it Art Deco? You don't think it's from the 1920s? Probably dates to the 1980s or 1990s. It's pretty young. It's been patinated. You know patina. Oh, look at this nice Chippendale side table. It has a beautiful patina. That's wood. They're talking about the oily buildup on wood. Patina is the application of color to a piece of metal sculpture. Patina, that term has nothing to do with the oily buildup on wood. The technical term for the oily buildup on wood is the oily buildup on wood. <laughs> right? That's patination, making an inexpensive metal look better with color. They're trying to make it look like bronze, that's why they have it this green or verdigris, V-E-R-D-I-G-R-I-S, verdigris color. Value on that piece? Probably dates to the 1980s. I would say value on that piece anywhere between $75 and $95. What'd you pay? 15 to 20. Not bad. Right? Not bad. So, Donna, do you wear glasses? Yes. Yes, I wear contacts. I wear glasses, prescription. Oh, I was in Seattle. I had to come down 29 floors in an evacuation for fire. You're laughing. It wasn't funny. <laughs> Here's why it wasn't funny. Well, first of all, you got to get 29 floors of this down, right? The other reason was I had my progressives on and I couldn't really see. Do you have that problem? Right? So then I bought the $5 Costco readers. <laughs> it's a three pack for 15 bucks. That's what I have. And that's what I'm going to put on to see this. Let's move my Penn State pocketbook. Oh, gosh. So how did you acquire this lithograph? mother. Hand colored. Was your mother a smoker? No. No. This has an acid burning on it, which is usually from cigarette smoke or from acidity from a mat. You also have an acid mat. So because she wasn't a smoker, she probably, of course, had an acid mat on it. That happens. This particular piece um, highlights black Americana. And a lot of people will collect just that. Oh. This is a print. Okay. So she didn't paint it. Okay. But it's an it's important distinction because Saracen's works that are paintings this size could be 750 bucks. Yours is a print, a picture of another picture, basically. Value on this one about 200. Okay. Thanks for bringing it. Thank you. Nice, terrific. All right. <laughs> Hi, Caroline. How are you? All right. Well, she's kind of spooky, kind of like, you know. 
What's that show, Stranger Things? <laughs> I get an email from a woman. My daughter is one of the actresses on Stranger Things. I know you're from New Haven. Will you come and we'll take you to lunch? Well, that's nice. I mean, you know. So then I had to start watching it. It's kind of scary. Did you ever watch it? It's a little scary. I know, I don't like scary. I like light beer. That's what I like. <laughs> How'd you acquire this? Tell me about this, hon. What happened to her eyes? I don't know. They're like gone. Yeah. You know, like they've been amputated. Hey, like this guy, maybe they amputated him. <laughs> they took him out with the big saw from the 19th century. Just carve those right out. Well, she doesn't have any eyes, so I don't like that. I, I can say that she's from the 1920s. I can say that she's in good condition other than the missing of the eyes and value on this doll about $20. Now this doll has eyes and she's supposed to look like somebody. Do you know who she is? You know who she is. You all know her. She was married to George. She's Martha. George and Martha Washington dolls are very popular in the 1926 to 1930 time period. Look at her, look at it me. She's like, hey lady, where's my Canton Ware China? What are you doing? <laughs> Mount Vernon, how'd you acquire her? So after you, it belonged to your mother and your grandmother gave, gave it to you after your mother passed away. This particular doll has to date to the 20s, late, mid 20s, 1926, which is our 150th anniversary of our country, right? And then into about the 1930s, into the Great Depression, lots of things were decorated with colonial revival images like Martha. Martha has a tricorn hat, she's got a little feather, and of course she's Martha Park Custis Washington, the second marriage. Value on this particular doll is just about $250. She's valuable. Nice. Do you have George? Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, maybe they were having words then, I don't know. <laughs> got a railroad tricolor gold railroad image on it of a locomotive value on this railroad watch from the 1880s I would say about seven hundred dollars it's very nice yeah it's good Carrie are you a smoker <laughs> good <laughs> here's why this is called French ivory it's highly flammable if you start smoking next to it the whole house is gonna go up <laughs> that's what you've got there and that's what you've got here French ivory. It looks like regular ivory, but it's basically a plastic, and it's really flammable. Then you have the tiny tight hinge footwear, and value on them is about $10. Did you have it reframed? Regional artist, working in this neck of the woods, good watercolorist. Is he working here? I know, when he was alive. <laughs> Never mind, I'm gonna drink beer. <laughs> I mean, I give up. I've got two of these to finish. <laughs> Tracy, most of the artists are dead. <laughs> so, okay. This particular piece of the watercolor dates to 1897. It has a new frame on it. Did you frame it? Yes. Okay. This particular watercolor has an acid-free mat. That's what the big white line shows you. If you can't recognize an acid free mat, that's what they look like. This white line that cuts the window of the mat, that's the window of the mat to reveal the artwork. It's signed here and it's dated 9-7-1897. This particular artist is probably trained in Chicago and value on this piece about $150 plus the cost of the frame. Okay. Yes, what? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I said, who's the items manufacturer? He said, I have no idea. Are you from Ohio, Mike? <laughs> OH, huh? O-H. I went to U-M. <laughs> wow. How'd you acquire this? Yeah? Do you like it? Yeah. I didn't even tease you about being from Ohio. I didn't even know that little bit of information when I started this. <laughs> the 6th Ohio Volunteer Infantry in the Spanish-American War. Hey, Mike, that's pretty good. I'm a little surprised at this. <laughs> You know, coming from you and all. <laughs> Nobody else gets beer. Go down to Mad Dog in Maryland. Tell them that you brought, bought me beer. They're going to be like, oh, ah, what do you mean? It bought her beer. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Company E, the 6th Ohio Volunteer Infantry in the Spanish-American War. Wow. So these guys are going to fight alongside Teddy Roosevelt. 
Not bad. How much did you pay for this? $40. 40 You paid 40 for this. Which is worth more? You're like, I don't want that frou-frou dish. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, right, Mike? You don't want this. This is a piece of American history, and it's also a piece of Ohio history. So you've got a military piece of history, the Spanish-American War. American history, the Spanish-American War. Um, Ohio history, right? And also, of course, the infantry, the volunteers. Value on this piece, military collector, 175 bucks all day, every day. Good for you. What's it for? You just bought it because it's pretty? Was it a good bargain? $20? Where was it made? You don't know? Is it Meissen? It's broken right here. Little tiny, uh, your husband's like, so what? That's not a big deal. This particular piece broken right here. It's got a couple of cherubs on either side. Excuse me, Mr. Elephant. <laughs> Couple cherubs on either side. All the roses are all hand sculpted. Couple of little breaks, little tiny breaks, minor damage overall. What do you put inside of it? Ashes, they're urn, it's an urn. They usually come in a pair. Mrs. Jones, Mr. Jones, right? The piece in fact is all porcelain, hand painted, hand molded, that means they're each sculptural and hand glazed. Value on it, about $200. So you did very well at the auction. And you will do well at auctions. You'll do well at auctions for a lot of reasons. Adhered or glued to this canvas called re-lined. Right, that's what you're looking at. And you can see where it ends right here at the top. They just cut it off. Okay? And then they nailed down the new canvas to make it look like it's old and has nails. So you have to be aware of that. This particular piece is non signed and you can see here where the gesso was. Gesso is the under glue, rabbit skin glue or gesso. That's what they use to adhere it to the new lining, where it's wrinkling, okay? So, and the other thing I don't like is when a framer has to get to it, it's doing this, it's doing that. That's gonna be hard for the framer to keep it square. Piece is American. Dates to the latter part of the 1800s in the manner of the Hudson River School artists. And I wouldn't be able to identify it which Hudson River School artist. I think it's in the manner of, and there's all these different things. After an artist, in the manner of an artist, attributed to an artist. Doesn't mean it's one of the artists in that school, the Hudson River School, but it's like their work. And those other phrases or terms, it's the level of likeness, right? Attributed to is very close to it. After is, I'm trying to copy it, everybody knows I'm copying it. And then you have also in the manner of, which is, eh, I'm kind of in between. So that's what you're looking at. Value on it, um, if it were Hudson River School, we could identify it as Hudson River School, $15,000. Yours, five grand. Pretty good still. I don't like a couple things. I don't like the way it's been relined. I don't like the stretcher bars it's using. These stretcher bars are so big and thick that the relined canvas is now pulling away from itself. So what would I do to you would have to get a professional restorer in to deal with this, and it's gonna cost you three or four grand on a piece that's worth four or five grand, right? Still a beautiful piece. You can also say, the heck with framing it, although frames are good for preserving your piece, protecting your piece, put D-rings in the back, put a wire on the back and hang it up, but it's still gonna do this. It's a nice painting. How much did you pay? 180. 180. At an online auction. In Muskegon, Michigan. In Muskegon, Michigan. Far, far from the Hudson River School. <laughs> right. Hi, Kevin. Hey, Kevin, would you trade this for their piece? Sure. 5,000, 4,000, 5,000, you wouldn't? The celebration of the Northwest Territory. You got it at Trader Days. Yeah. What's Trader Days? It's like a big flea market in uh, Wilshire, Ohio. What made you do this? What made you buy this at Trader Days? Well, the price. The price was right? Five bucks. All right, five bucks, that's the right price. <laughs> okay, so your frame is worth 10 but it's damaged. It's damaged here, the applied ornament's coming off. 
And then you've got this piece, in fact, that's in pretty good condition, Trader Days, but this piece is a hand-colored lithograph, and boy, oh boy, has it been in water. Have you been in water? Are you a swimmer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been in water, too. You know how your fingers get all crinkled? Same yeah. operation. <laughs> Right, and then it was put into this frame in the 1930s or so, that's what these brads tell you. Okay. Circa 1930s little nails, brads for framing. The piece is from about that time period too, and it says right here that it's from, of course, 1938, right? So it's about that time period. Value on the piece in this condition, about 35 bucks. Okay. Plus the frame at 10, that's still 40 bucks, you paid five. Right. Not bad, yeah. <laughs> not bad. Thank you very much.